Welcome fellow minions. So we previously had our feature guide for Undead Legacy and now we dig deeper into how things are actually done. This is mainly an additional content for beginners and players who would like to know how certain features work and it generally covers your first week in the mod. The menu in Undead Legacy is very comprehensive. I don't think there's any other overhaul mods out there that allow you to adjust as many features from the menu. Besides options like wandering horde numbers, frequency and similar tweaks, the user interface can be customized a lot. For example, you can even have your health, food, drink or encumbrance bars only show up at certain levels. So once you reach 25%, it will only appear at that particular point. You must be in game for these options to appear under the video and interface menu. Two settings though I should bring to your attention. First, the death setting. When you die, besides losing experience, it will also drop you down a level of random action skills with less food and water and less health. So you can lose a day or more of progress depending on which skills are lost. This setting really brings it home to avoid dying, but you can change it if you really want to. Then second, some players don't like the health bars appearing and showing up on zombies, so you can adjust that too. Just disable them if you don't want to see them. On day one after waking up, I would strongly suggest you just follow the tutorial, which is by the way something you can yet again disable in the settings if you don't want to see it appearing. Doing the tutorial will ease you into the mod as it is quite different from most other mods and vanilla. Many things that you just did in your backpack previously, like arrows or a bow, must now be done with a workstation. So doing those first few quests as soon as you wake up in the world will at least put you on the right path, especially with crafting the carpenter's workstation. This is your first workstation and requires some scrap iron. You can easily get that from a few of the old cars lying around, even with a stone axe. As most things can be picked up in Undead Legacy, after you've finished doing the Carpenter's Workstation quest, you can just pick that up and dump it into your inventory. While facing the station, hold E and an option will appear for you to pick it up. I would also suggest that you start the trader quests as soon as possible, especially as after you complete the first tier of quests, one of the rewards is bicycle parts, and this will help you getting that first vehicle a bit faster. Now, weight certainly needs to be addressed, as it is one of those topics that can turn some players off the mod. Everything you carry will add to your total weight. It was an issue for me when I started playing, but it certainly grew on me and I really don't think it is that bad anymore. As soon as you can, I would suggest you craft a tailor workstation, as this will give you access to crafting pocket mods for your clothes. Armor pocket mods you can craft later, but the clothing pocket mods give you extra capacity without needing to research them. The Taylor Workstation also has a backpack that you can craft and it provides you a massive boost to your inventory capacity. However, you will have to learn the schematic first, but try and do that as soon as you can. There are two other items to look out for, the Enforcer Belt and the Enforcer Vest. They are loot and purchase only, but they will add an additional carrying capacity. So the more you explore, do quests and loot, the better in possibly finding them. I realize the drone is a pain in the butt for some, but it gives a lot of additional capacity, even without storage mods. You also have an intellect track that you can use to upgrade its carry capacity even more, making it a formidable storage companion when exploring. As the mod has action skills, one of them is the weight action skill. You can get stronger by carrying heavy things. The first few nights I didn't venture out that much and leave my base. So, so that my time was not wasted by sitting around and waiting for the night to end, I would fill up my backpack with heavy items until I was very encumbered. Then I would sneak around back and forth in my base and do a few things while being heavily encumbered. This will increase your weight skill faster and you can easily gain more than a level during the night. Besides the pack mule, which obviously also increases your weight capacity, I would suggest you take a good look at how many things you are hauling around all the time. Ask yourself, do I really need 6 repair kits or 20 time charges? As each item increases in weight, maybe you should only carry 10 drinks when exploring or 3 or 4 food items and not an entire stack. Vehicles also take your weight into account. They can carry a lot more, but they may not always cope while carrying you and the other items. 
However, once you do actually get to cars, SUVs, vans, and trucks, you really can get away with carrying a lot, and it's generally not a problem. However, if you start hauling ore and mining resources, then at least a mining cart can be a great way to deal with weight needs. Something like the mining truck is only there for the most serious of miners, so many players won't even bother with the ginormous mining vehicle with a capacity of about 30 mining carts. Research is fundamental to Undead Legacy. Without it, you won't be able to craft things. Craft a research bench to research recipes and schematics. Some schematics you will find while exploring, but many you will have to make. Research notes are a very important ingredient when crafting recipes and schematics. Finding other schematics and then scrapping them is the most important source. Check out newsstands, post boxes and search bookcases and houses. Of course, cracker books and library POs will be your best locations. Playing co-op can also help a lot. For example, someone designated as the cook can read certain food-related recipes while everybody else doesn't have to worry about it, and you can scrap those other extra recipes. Some recipes you won't need as it is not part of your playstyle, and then just scrap away. A yellow star on a recipe or schematic means that you have not read or learned that schematic yet. No yellow star, well, you can freely scrap it. And finally, you can also buy research notes from traders. Now, having said this concerning research, Subquake has said that research in Undead Legacy and how we currently know it will be changing in a big way once Alpha 21 arrives. The change is a pretty big deal, so once 2.7 comes out for Undead Legacy, expect what I've said over here about research to possibly be a thing of the past. Of course, I will cover this one day in a future video, so you have nothing to worry about as you will also get that info over here. In most mods and vanilla, repair kits are cheap. In Undead Legacy, once you are past the primitive repair kit and moving on to the regular enhanced or superior repair kits, well, that's a different story. The repair kits above the primitive version are realistically very costly and you should only use them if you are desperate to repair something away from the base. Most of the time you will be repairing with the maintenance workstation. Just add your item to the workstation and click repair. If you have an item that is too high for the workstation level, then you'll have to upgrade the workstation. However, there will be a warning telling you this. Just so you know, most traders also have maintenance workstations that are housed in the trader themselves. Now you can do your repairs there, but they will cost quite a few jukes. So using your own maintenance workstation is the main method for doing most repairs of weapons, armor and tools. Your main vanilla vehicles can be crafted, but most others will have to be repaired. There are a lot of repairable vehicles around the map, and this is the easy process. First, when it comes to motorcycles, cars, SUVs, vans and trucks, I would suggest that you shop around. Not all repairable vehicles are born equal. My first repaired vehicle was an SUV with its higher carry capacity. As I went around exploring, I would mark potential SUVs and other vehicles on the map. The one I chose required fewer components for the repair than some of those that I'd found over the days of exploring. You can also pin the recipes and schematics and this helped a lot when I went back to my base to collect the components I needed for the repair. Second and most important, you need the correct maintenance repair level. Yes, education my friends. Before you can just go ahead and repair a vehicle, you need to know how to do this. There are seven levels of vehicle maintenance, starting from the bicycle, going through to the mini bike, motorcycle, car, van, truck, and finally the gyrocopter. So to repair this SUV, I must have car maintenance knowledge to be able to do this. On top of this, to get to car maintenance, I must also know how to do the other levels. You can't just jump to the car level. You must do bicycle, mini bike and motorcycle before you can know how to repair a car or an SUV. Each class of vehicle has their own wheels. As a tip, wrench the crap out of vehicles where you can visibly see the wheels as there is a higher chance of salvaging a wheel from those. As mentioned in my feature guide, farming is very similar to vanilla, but with a few of those subquake tweaks to enhance it. 
An alternative harvest option is to press E to pick up your crops. Crops have timers to easily see when they can be harvested. Chicken coops need hens, so you must run around and catch them. This also makes it easier to get meat at the start of the game, as catching a hen is generally a bit more easier than trying to stab it. Especially as once you catch her, you can put the hen down and it gives you a second or two before she runs off, making it a bit more easier to make the kill. Your chicken coop hens need seeds to feed them. Any seeds, even pine seeds will actually do. Just put them in your inventory and click the chicken coop. A tip for easy seeds is crafting grass seeds, especially as you don't even have to learn the recipe for them and plant fibers are like, well, everywhere. In the first week, obtaining eggs is pretty easy and they can be spotted from a very far distance. After you've collected whatever's in the nest, you can leave the nest as it is because even if you have loot respawn disabled, the nests will repopulate their eggs once per week. Most of us know a beehive is, well, a beehive. However, in Undead Legacy, the term is apiary, which is a collection of hives. So don't search for beehive, you won't find it. You need a queen bee to start a hive, either get lucky with chopping up stumps or buy a queen from a trader. What the hell wrecked? Not that queen. All weapons, tools and armor have a quality level. It starts with H with a low quality and moves up to S, the higher quality. You can find different quality levels in loot, but when you craft items, you will always start at the bottom with H level. There is nothing you can do about that. You can't increase your crafting level with skills or perks, but by upgrading your workstations, you will get to craft more weapons and items, but these will always start at the H level. Once you have an item, either from loot or from crafting, you can then upgrade it from your maintenance workstation. Upgrading an item will give you better stats and more mod slots, up to a maximum of 5 mod slots. The more you upgrade to a higher level, the more chance you get to fail on the upgrade. So, you can see the percentage chance of a failure. Because of this, for some things like tools, I don't even bother with upgrading beyond B or C. This is one feature that I believe Subquake may be re-looking at and reworking. I've been asked which are the best weapons, however with Undead Legacy there's such a good selection of weapons and balance, you can really just go with whatever you prefer, either in the guns or the melee region. At the start, obtaining rounds of ammo for your guns can be a lot more difficult, so I would suggest you use your melee weapon of choice and conserve your ammunition for emergencies. Later you can spend more time digging up sulfur, coal and making gunpowder for your guns. Molotovs are very effective in the early game. You can kill many of the early zombies with a single molly, so don't underestimate the power of a Molotov when thrown at a door or wall with zombies behind it. One of their ingredients is gas. To take gas or fuel from drums and containers, you will need to equip an empty gasoline or fuel container in your toolbar. Then press E while facing the container you want to remove the fuel from. This is the same method that you would use when obtaining water with an empty jar or an empty water container on a water source like a toilet or a sink. One thing that Undead Legacy excels with is it is pretty good at letting you know what is required when crafting and which workstations are needed. Especially as there are a lot of different workstations and most can be upgraded two or three levels. To upgrade a workstation, hold the E key while looking at the workstation. The upgrade often requires a hammer or nail gun to be in your inventory as well. At the start, I would suggest four of these stations as being probably the most important to get going with. The carpenter station, which as you know, that is part of your starter quest and you will need to do that as a beginner anyhow. Then the tailor's workstation, so to get those clothing pocket mods. And finally, the maintenance and research stations. As the research station is quite a bit cheaper and does not take away from the maintenance station, you can even go with that before if you have those components are available. That is the initial ones I would suggest. After that, you can choose as the need arises, like maybe the furnace or the blacksmith. When you update your carpentry workstation, you will need a table saw. You can pick up table saws from construction PORs, so look out for this area in particular. There is always a table saw around the back end. The quicker you can get yourself a wrench, the better. Everything is useful in Undead Legacy. Pick up basic items like old tires, boxes and rubbish. You can scrap them where they are, or you can dump them in your inventory and scrap them later or put them down and then scrap them. Further into the game, you can also use the recycling station. 
By the way, you can also pick up fuse boxes and electrical terminals. They are an easy, great source of wire fuses and scrap metal. You need to have the scrap wire in your inventory when connecting up electrical items. According to Subquake, when wrenching, power attacks with a wrench have a double penalty to durability. When salvaging, power attacks or right clicking will not give you extra materials when compared to a left click. However, you'll have to maintain that tool more often as it will degrade faster. Reading your journal will help. As usual, many players coming from vanilla or other mods have seen it all and they don't bother with their journal entries. There are important concepts and guides on key mechanics, so read your Undead Legacy journal. It certainly will help with a better understanding of how certain features work in the mod. By the end of your first week, you should have chosen a base, or even as early as the first day. If you choose wisely, you likely won't have to move later. Moving can be a pain in the butt. If you have many items, trying to carry and move things to your new base could take potentially ages. I moved from this house to the fire station after about two weeks, and it took nearly two days with a bicycle. I found out that the bicycle in Undead Legacy has no storage, so trust me, make sure you either have better transport or move early. Base building blocks start from wood, upgrade to large stone, and then to brick. After clay bricks comes the concrete and finally steel and then titanium. Now early on crafting a lot of these items is pretty time consuming. However bricks can be obtained from construction piles so you can at least upgrade a few blocks of your horde base just to get some of the blocks to brick level. Consensus is no matter what you find and no matter what you do, most of the time you are going to take over and renovate an existing POI at the start of a game. There is no real difference between vanilla and undead legacy bases, though make sure you have expansion room due to the many workstations and some of those workstations can get pretty large when they are upgraded. I prefer brick or concrete buildings, so look out for those, though the choice is pretty endless and flat roofed buildings are quite numerous. Once you have your pick, just knock out ways for the zombies to get up to you. Another thing to remember is remote broadcast radius for your base. To switch on storage broadcasting, hold the E key and select the broadcast icon. Now these storage containers will become part of your inventory when you access a workstation. Later there is a radio to extend the range of remote broadcasting as well. Early storage in your base can easily be sorted with rubbish bags and boxes. These leather and metal containers have that very loud noise when opening and closing and easily trigger a zombie. So to avoid the problem, use cardboard boxes initially until, well, you just don't give a crap about noise at all. Wandering hordes will come past your base at least once per day, depending on your settings and whether you are out exploring or not. I always say this with overhaul mods, you don't have to kill every zombie that you see, just because they exist. For this reason, running away from wandering hordes so you can fight another day is perfectly acceptable. Finally, we move on to Horde Knight. Like your base, early game procedure is the adoption of an existing POI. You could look for many of the very bare minimum block horde bases on YouTube and just go with something like that. Something that doesn't use that much on the resource side. Even if you're too scared to build anything and unsure how things work, if you're playing on 32 zombie horde numbers or fewer, then just finding any brick building, knocking out the bottom areas and sitting tight for the night will also work. 32 zombies will not be able to destroy the whole brick building. 64, well, that could be pushing it a bit. So that is it for now. Hopefully you did get something out of this guide and I will see you in the next one. Master, we are not allowed.